Yesterday's episode was about search engine optimization epiphanies that changed the way I look at the internet. Today's episode is going to be another SEO epiphany, but this is one that changed the way I looked at journalism. This episode is about the reality of journalism, especially in regards to search engine optimization and how SEOs manipulate journalists. Or maybe the SEOs are the ones being manipulated. I'll let you decide after listening to this. But it's pretty crazy if you have never done this or have ever experienced anything like this. So first you have the fundamentals of search engine optimization. You have domain authority, one of the most basic things in SEO. I did a whole section about this on yesterday's episode. But domain authority, it is an algorithmic score that says how capable your website is to rank for competitive keywords in your domain, in your niche. How authoritative are you in your niche? It's determined by an algorithm. The most important thing that affects domain authority are backlinks. When one website links to your site, that increases your domain authority. If the website that links to your website has a higher domain authority itself, then that increases your domain authority more. If you get lots of links, that increases your domain authority. So a tenant, a fundamental part of search engine optimization is getting backlinks. And there are all sorts of schemes for getting backlinks. One of them is using journalists. So you need to get backlinks to increase your domain authority so that you can rank for competitive keywords on Google. You know, Forbes has a domain authority of 94 out of 100. I think YouTube's domain authority is literally 100 out of 100. Ahrefs has something called domain rating. But anyway, domain authority, it is, base, it is SEO 101. So you need backlinks. And you wanna get backlinks from high domain authority publications. .edu websites, those also increase. Domain authority, quite a bit. So do .govs. .edu sites and .gov websites are very valuable. If you can get .gov links and .edu backlinks, these are backlinks from sites that end with .edu or .gov. These will be very valuable to your domain authority. But also getting links from high domain authority publications like USA Today and Forbes, Huffington Post, the New York Times. Oh, the New York Times is a big one. Regardless of how you lean politically, these publications carry a lot of algorithmic authority. Now, here's what not a lot of people know. If you've been doing SEO for a while, you will know this. If you have read Trust Me, I'm Lying by Ryan Holiday, you will know this. But if you have not, you might not know this. Journalists, they need experts for their articles. And sometimes they will reach out to experts who are top of mind. Maybe they will search people on LinkedIn. They will search for people on Google or in different expert places. But a top place that was used was this place called Helper Reporter Out. Helper Reporter Out has rebranded to Connectively, but this was Helper Reporter Out, also called Harrow. It connected journalists who are looking for experts for their articles to those experts. And the experts were on Helper Reporter because they wanted to be quoted in major publications, which would increase their own authority. It would make them more credible. They could share it on social media and flex. And it was used by SEOs who wanted to get backlinks. Now, the people who just wanted to be included in the publications and they didn't care about the backlinks, they were less likely to do this. But the SEOs, the SEOs wanted every link that they could get. And SEOs realized that many journalists, most journalists, in fact, have agendas. Most journalists have agendas when they are writing their articles. They have a thesis or a hypothesis that they are trying to prove. They have a point of view that they are looking to get confirmation on. And they want experts who will confirm their point of view. If you told them something that conflicted with their point of view, they were not going to use one of your quotes. They, they weren't going to take your quote, even if it was very interesting and you cited great sources. Because that would mean that they had to rewrite their article. And a lot of the times they've already written great portions of their article. They're just looking for the extra few quotes, expert quotes to top it off. So if you told them something that disagreed with their thesis, unless every single person told them that, good chance they weren't going to go with what you were saying. So many SEOs, because they wanted the backlinks, even if they disagreed with what the journalist was asking, they, well, SEOs first, they would figure out, okay, what is the point of view of these journalists? And usually it's pretty easy to tell journalists will phrase questions in such a way that you can tell that they are looking for confirmation of so-and-so belief. And so SEOs would figure that out and then they would tell journalists what they want to hear. And that would increase their acceptance rate 
into publications a tremendous degree. They would tell journalists what they want to hear. And that's very common. That's number one, is that SEOs, even if they disagreed, they would figure out what the journalists were looking for. And even if they disagreed, many SEOs would still tell journalists what they wanted to hear in an effort to get that backlink. Number two, and it gets darker now, lots of SEOs who weren't properly credible, they didn't have enough accreditations, especially people who were maybe just starting. Maybe it was in a harmless, innocuous category like marketing, but they didn't have a ton of accreditations to get included in articles. You know, journalists, they want to get the most credible people that they can. And so number two was that a lot of SEOs would, and they still do this, just completely make up accreditations. They would put fake stuff on their LinkedIn, fake logos on their website. They would write in the email response to journalists or whatever the platform was. Yes, I have been cited in these publications or I have worked for these companies. And here's the crazy thing. Most journalists don't even check. I could tell such crazy stories of SEOs I know who have said completely outlandish things to journalists, like they were a researcher at so-and-so university researching this exact topic that the journalist is writing an article on, and this is my opinion on the topic, and my opinion also confirms what your article is about. And journalists, they're like, okay, these accreditations are there, and this person is telling me what I want to hear. And the journalists will just take it at face value. Most of them don't even check. And here's where it gets, it gets even crazier now. This is called trading up the chain. And it's pretty much the same. It's like the concept of telephone, the, the, ch the children's game telephone. Then journalists would take this and they'd be able to say that they appeared in these publications and use that to up their own credibility. And now all of a sudden, people think that this person, this SEO is this credible person where the SEO just made up the initial credibility. It's the fake it till you make it strategy and it is real and SEOs abuse it a ton to get backlinks. That's number two. Number three is there are good actors out there who also do SEO and want backlinks. They don't want to tell journalists what they want to hear. Maybe they have some accreditations, but they don't want to lie. I'm actually one of these people. I don't, I, I don't like to lie. I really hate lying. I'm a bad liar. I find it uncomfortable. And I find that the more lies I tell, the easier it is to get caught up in this lie. And it's kind of like you're always looking over your shoulder. It's just more things to remember. And I have so many things that I'm doing, the less lies I have to keep in my head to remember the better. So I don't tell lies. I'm not saying I've never told lies. I had to learn my lesson that I don't like telling lies. The reason I know that I'm not a good liar is because I tried lying and I didn't like it. I found it uncomfortable and I was bad at it. So I don't lie. And there's lots of other SEOs who don't want to lie, but maybe they have something groundbreaking to share. Actually, uh, uh, so I'm a good example of this. Sometimes journalists, they want to write articles about search engine optimization. And maybe they have this perspective that the skyscraper technique, where you have to write an article for 2,000 to 3,000 plus words is the way to do SEO. Now, I think that's nonsense. I think the way to do SEO is bottom of funnel SEO, where you write around 415 words and you target bottom of funnel keywords that are not very competitive. They don't have crazy search volumes, but they're super bottom of funnel there. The searchers are cash in hand. They know what they want, but they don't know the brand that is going to give it to them. Now, if I was using something like Harrow, which is now Connectively, or Featured.com, or Quoted. These are all other services that connect journalists who are looking for experts to experts. If I was using one of these services, and I came across a journalist writing, the skyscraper technique is the best. I need someone to tell me why it is the best. I'm not going to go and respond, actually, you're wrong. The skyscraper technique is not the best. Bottom of funnel SEO is the best. I'm not going to do that. It's going to be a waste of my time. The journalist isn't even going to take my answer. So number three is if you actually have something groundbreaking that you want to share, the best way to do it isn't through journalists, unless you can find a journalist who will agree with you, but it's certainly not through journalists looking for experts. It's self-publish it and do marketing for it yourself. And that's what I'm doing with Compact Keywords, my SEO program. 
because it is about bottom of funnel SEO and how bottom of funnel SEO is the best. And I am self-publishing it and doing marketing for it myself. Now, if you had some groundbreaking research you wanted to share, and it's hard to find journalists who are looking to write about this or who are, it's going to be really easy for them to be interested in this, you might just want to consider self-publishing it yourself and then doing marketing for it yourself rather than going to a journalist and trying to get the journalist to publish it for you. So that is number three. To sum it up, number one, journalists have agendas. A lot of SEOs will tell journalists what they want to hear in order to get backlinks, in order to increase their SEO domain authority. Number two, a lot of SEOs will make things up. When you know this and you see how it is done and you actually see people do this, you realize that what you read, you just, you become, I'm not going to say more cynical, but less trusting of the news when you actually see the reality of this. And if you're doing link building, it's definitely worth knowing about. If you are building backlinks, it's definitely worth knowing about. Number three, if you actually want to publish something groundbreaking and you can't find journalists who are going to publish it for you, you got to do it yourself and then do marketing for that. But to sum it up, ultimately, this entire podcast is basically experts in articles, especially SEOs, good chance that they are just people who are willing to agree with journalists who only sometimes think for themselves. Because journalists, they actually might not want to write what they are writing, but they are told by their bosses that they have to write such things. And that happens too. And so the journalist has an agenda and the SEO wants to get the backlink and the SEO will tell the journalist what they want to hear, make up things so that they are credible. And the journalist is just like, oh my God, if I could just get an expert who was credible enough and said this to complete this article, it would make my life so much easier. And then the, the SEO comes along. The SEO was like, I am that person. And the journalist is like, I need this so bad. I'm not even going to bother doing a deep dive into this person's past. Okay. Their LinkedIn looks fine. Fine. And then you see this. And then all of a sudden people who had a little experience, all of a sudden they were in top publications where the top publication is saying that they are a highly experienced professional. And that's the reality. It happens with featured.com, happens with quoted, happens with helper reporter out, which is not, which is now connectively. And that is the reality of link building with journalism and the reality of journalism. This was an SEO epiphany that really changed the way that I looked at media because I saw so many SEOs doing this. So that's what I have for you on this episode of the show. This is episode 475 of my daily digital marketing, daily search engine optimization podcast. I recorded this while I got some food on the stove. I'm going to go eat. I am starving. I'm having a great day. Hope you're having a great day too. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.